At the start of the movie, Vincent is just doing his job like any normal day, but things turn bad quickly when he gets upset with the new guy over a cup of coffee, using words so harsh they could spoil milk. Soon after, this intern, staring hard at Vincent, loses his temper too, but way more dramatically, using his laptop to attack instead of work. It's total chaos. Colleagues come running to pull the intern away, like they're breaking up a fight, while Vincent goes to take care of his injuries. The boss comes in, shaking her head, talking about how stress is really getting to everyone. She decides no more interns, thinking it'll solve everything. Even though she talks about maybe complaining formally, Vincent doesn't want to. You can't blame him. Who would want to keep thinking about such a disaster? But when he goes back to work, it's clear things have changed. Everyone's looking at him, and there are whispers everywhere. Instead of staying quiet after work, Vincent starts looking for a date online, even trying to get people to feel sorry for him by posting a selfie with his injury, along with a really corny quote. You'd think that would be the end of it, but no. The next day, another co-worker loses it and uses a pen to attack Vincent. Again, people have to jump in and pull them apart. This time, Vincent runs off, leaving the other person confused and crying. What happens next? A visit to HR, an honest talk from the person with the pen, and everyone agreeing that too much stress and work are the real problems here. They don't make a formal complaint. They just shake hands, which feels more like making peace than actually forgiving. Then, another boss suggests, maybe Vincent should work from home for a bit. It's clear he's accidentally causing trouble at the office, setting off people's tempers. Leaving work, Vincent is filled with worry. He quickly looks online to see if anyone is talking about him, but finds nothing bad. That night, Vincent starts something new. He goes on a date with a woman he met online, and they have a good time talking in a nice restaurant. However, something bothers him. A homeless man staring through the window makes him uncomfortable. Then, sadly, the man gets hit by a car. Vincent feels it's time to go home. Walking through the city feels strange. He feels like people are watching him, so he takes a taxi home. The next day, things don't get better. When Vincent is biking, a car driver seems to challenge him. Vincent tries to get away fast and ends up falling, but he's okay, and the car goes away. These scary moments make Vincent search the internet for stories about random anger and violence happening everywhere, like in sports places and malls. The stories all talk about sudden fights starting for no reason. Wanting to understand, Vincent talks to a psychologist, hoping for some answers. But the psychologist thinks Vincent is just looking for any kind of attention, even if it causes trouble. Vincent doesn't give up. He goes home and uses his wall to put together clues, trying to see the pattern in these scary situations. He figures out that everything bad starts with just a look. Vincent knows what causes the trouble, but now he needs to find out how to stop it. One day, Vincent goes out to his balcony to say hi to his neighbor. The hello starts nice, but then turns weird. After looking each other in the eyes, the neighbor suddenly changes and starts throwing things at Vincent, who has to quickly hide. When Vincent looks again, his neighbor seems confused, like he just woke up. This makes Vincent realize that if you break eye contact, people stop being angry. Soon, Vincent gets a package with things he thinks will protect him, a taser, handcuffs, and pepper spray. He practices with the taser to use it fast if he needs to. With his new safety stuff, Vincent goes for a walk, trying not to get noticed. But when he gets back, some kids in the neighborhood attack him. Vincent tries to not hurt them, but he has to defend himself. Their mom sees this and thinks Vincent is the bad guy. She calls over more people, and soon a lot of neighbors are upset with Vincent. Scared, Vincent blocks his door with furniture and waits until everyone leaves. When it's quiet, Vincent packs some things and leaves, hiding his face with his hood. He goes to his dad's place. His dad, Jean-Pierre, lives with someone new now. Vincent borrows a car and gets keys to their old family house in the country. But when he asks to stay the night, he finds out his old room is being fixed up. His dad offers him a couch or the garage, where all his old toys and stuff are stored, to sleep for the night. Feeling out of place at his dad's house, Vincent decides to leave again. He grabs a few old things from the garage and a hammer for protection before hitting the road. A few hours later, he stops to buy food and eats it on a park bench. There, he meets Joachim, a homeless man with a dog who seems nice and safe to talk to. 
Joachim shares his story of how he went from being a university teacher to living on the streets because of the same kind of sudden violence that Vincent has faced. Joachim tells Vincent about a place online called The Watchman Blog. It's a spot where people who have gone through similar scary situations share tips on how to stay safe. Joachim himself is just a fake name he uses online to keep his real identity a secret. Taking Joachim's suggestion to get a dog for safety and company, Vincent keeps going and stops to fill up his car. He nearly gets into a fight with someone who wants to hit him with a shovel, but he drives away quickly, even leaving without paying for his gas. When Vincent gets to his family's country house, he makes sure it's secure and then looks up the Watchman blog on his laptop to join this group of people who've been through the same things. He has to delete all his social media. Vincent quickly decides to do this, saying goodbye to his old life online. He joins the blog under the name Dave17, ready to learn how to deal with this strange situation with the help of others who understand. Vincent's days are now filled with careful actions, like how he gets his food delivered. He asks the delivery person to leave it by the gatey and waits to pick it up when no one is around. But this routine is broken when a neighbor comes over to say hi. It starts off friendly until the neighbor's daughter begins to act mean, making Vincent hurry back inside his house. Safe at home, Vincent chats with Joachim online, sharing stories and finding a bit of comfort. But peace at home doesn't last. Vincent finds a problem with the toilet and then discovers the septic tank outside is also not working right. When a repairman comes to fix it, Vincent tries to keep his distance to avoid any trouble. However, the repairman gets angry and they end up fighting. The situation gets really bad and Vincent thinks he has to defend himself with a rock, fearing he has hurt the repairman badly. In a panic, he cleans up and drives away with the man, later finding out he's still alive. They have another fight and Vincent, feeling he has no other choice, ends up using his hammer. After hiding the repairman, Vincent goes home to clean up and take care of his injuries. Wanting some company and maybe a bit of normal life, Vincent goes to a dog shelter the next day. Amid all the loud dogs, one quiet dog catches his attention with a friendly look. Feeling a special bond, Vincent decides to take this dog home, calling him Sultan. Vincent and his new dog Sultan go to the beach to play and have fun, enjoying a short break from their worries. But when a family comes close and Sultan starts to bark, Vincent trusts Sultan's feeling that something's wrong and they quickly go back home. Vincent takes a picture with Sultan and his taser and shares it with Joachim, showing they're ready for anything. One night, wanting a change, Vincent goes to a drive through and orders food from his phone. He pretends to be disabled so they'll bring the food to his car. Margot, the worker who brings out his order, talks to him and likes how kind he is to Sultan. When she asks about his disability, Vincent tells her the truth, but she doesn't mind and enjoys the break from work. Vincent starts to like Margot and looks her up online, starting a small crush. After meeting Margot, Vincent gets more serious about keeping himself safe. He starts working out and watching videos on how to protect himself. He becomes even more cautious when he hears a neighbor talking to her daughter about being too aggressive, reminding him of the dangers around. The online group he's part of talks about making their home safer or even moving away to be safe. Vincent decides to cover his windows to feel more secure. Joachim tells Vincent about the tough choice to leave his wife to keep her safe from whatever is causing all this trouble. Vincent's normal routine changes when he has to go through a police checkpoint, being very careful to not upset anyone. His trip to the fast food place becomes more interesting when Margot gets scared by two scary bikers and hides in Vincent's car. To say thanks, she suggests they grab a beer, but the moment is ruined when the bikers follow them and ask for money. When one of the bikers gives Vincent a dangerous look, Sultan barks a warning. Vincent uses his taser to stop the biker, and his quick actions and self-defense training help them get away from the danger and into the night. The mood in the car changes fast. Sultan, the dog, growls to warn Vincent just as Margot suddenly attacks him. Vincent has to drive and deal with Margot at the same time. He finally calms her down, stopping a big accident. When Margot wakes up, she's locked in a room in Vincent's house. Vincent tells her to close her eyes, leads her to his car, and puts handcuffs on her, trying to keep them both safe. They go to a supermarket next. Vincent tries to talk to a man there, but it scares the man away. Inside, when Sultan growls again, it's a sign that trouble is coming. Vincent runs out as people start throwing things and chasing him. 
They barely get back to the car and drive away from the angry group, even as someone breaks a window. This scary moment makes Margot really understand what Vincent is going through, and she believes his story. They go to Margot's place, which is a boat. It's a nice, quiet spot where they can relax. They have drinks and dinner together, and the scary night makes them closer. They end up having a close moment, but Margot has to stay handcuffed to make sure she stays calm. After everything that's happened, they both just want things to be normal, even if it's just Margot wanting to smoke a cigarette under the stars. Vincent goes outside to get cigarettes from his car when his phone rings. It's Joachim, who has amazing news. He's not sick anymore. How it happened is a mystery to both Joachim and Vincent, but Joachim sounds very happy. He can't wait to see his wife again, and his news gives Vincent hope. Vincent and Margot have a calm moment and fall asleep after smoking together, but the peace doesn't last. Sultan, the dog, growls, waking Vincent up because Margaux is acting violent again. Vincent has to defend himself, and after the confusion, Margaux isn't upset. She even asks Vincent to help with her injury, showing their connection is still strong despite the trouble. The quiet of the night is broken again when Sultan alerts them to someone coming close. It's one of Margot's neighbors. Then, they hear yelling and screaming far away, making them decide to leave quickly. When they get back to the city, they see a terrible sight. A house on fire with someone inside, someone Vincent knows. They go to Vincent's place next, finding Jean-Pierre there with a gun and hurt. Sad about his girlfriend being hurt in a violent way, he tells his sad story, and Vincent manages to calm him down and they share a moment of sadness together. In the morning, Vincent gets a last message from Joachim. His reunion with his wife ended badly, and he's saying goodbye. Joachim also leaves a map to safe places set up by their online friends. With no time to be sad, Vincent, Margot, and Jean-Pierre head to one of these safe spots, getting ready for whatever comes next. The news on the radio is scary. There's a lot of violence happening everywhere, and everyone is told to stay inside. On their urgent trip to find a safe place, Vincent and his group see a lot of trouble. The roads are full of cars, showing that many people are trying to get away just like them. They can't go back and find themselves stuck in a scary situation where people start to fight each other out of fear and anger. Jean-Pierre, wanting revenge for his lost girlfriend, fights to get out of the car and joins the chaos. Vincent follows to keep his dad safe, but finds a lot of violence. When he finds Jean-Pierre, he sees him acting very aggressively, but not towards Vincent. Through all this, Sultan, the dog, stays calm, making Vincent realize that the violence isn't aimed at him this time. However, he loses sight of Jean-Pierre in the confusion. Margot, who was watching from the car, manages to unlock her handcuffs and goes to find Vincent, hoping they can both get away from the terrible scene. Then, Vincent, in a surprising twist, attacks Margot, his face showing no emotion. Margot quickly thinks to cover his eyes, stopping the attack, feeling sorry. Vincent agrees to be blindfolded to keep going without hurting anyone, with Margot leading the way. They move through an empty town and face another danger. Snipers. Margot's quick thinking gets them to an unused car, which they use to escape. They go back to Margot's boat on the river, a sign of hope amid the trouble. Not knowing what comes next, they decide to start over. Vincent and Sultan get on the boat, and Margot makes sure Vincent is blindfolded and handcuffed for safety. They share a hug and a kiss, ready to face whatever comes together, aiming for a fresh start. This is where the story of the movie Vincent Must Die ends. Thanks for following along.